All right, this podcast will go over how to configure IPv6 on your router and your host. You should have already done the part of the lab with the link local addresses. Uh, there's another podcast that goes over that stuff. Uh, so basically, we will be connecting your router to my network. I have an IPv6 gateway on my network that is going to be FD00240 colon colon one. Uh, you will be given an IP address in that subnet that you need to put onto your router's external interface. And then I will give you some uh, addressing that you can use for your inside, and you will need to create your subnets from that. So basically, I'm going to give you something like FD00240 and some number represented by the all X's here. Uh, and then you will need to create two subnets. In this example, I've created one subnet by putting a one in the fourth quartet and then another subnet by putting a two in the fourth quartet. And then I gave my addresses on this uh, map, uh, colon, colon, one uh, for the interface identifier. So uh, we'll be doing the inner VLAN routing config uh, with IPv6. So you should be intimately familiar with how to do that by now. Steps are mostly the same, except of instead of IPv4 addresses, we'll be giving them IPv6 addresses. I've already cabled everything uh, so I could do the podcast without being like, hey, yo, I'll be back in a minute. I got to go connect the cable. Uh, so I've uh, cabled everything, and I've also set the VLANs on my switch. I put one of my hosts in VLAN 200. I put my other host in VLAN 202. And then I configured my port to my router for trunking. So now it's time to configure the router. First thing I'm going to configure is the interfaces, specifically the interface connected to my LAN. Uh, I need to do a no shutdown on the physical interface. And then I'm going to create some sub interfaces. Since I, since I created VLAN 201 and 202, I'm going to create sub interfaces FA01.201 and FA01.202. I'm going to put the encapsulation command on to tell it what VLAN it's working for. And then I'm going to give it an IPv6 address. There are two different ways you can do IPv6 addresses uh, on routers, uh, static addresses, uh, static IPv6 addresses on routers. One way is you can tell it you can tell it exactly what you want the IP to be by specifying the entire thing and then putting the prefix length. That's what I'm going to do on FA01, right? So that gave it that IP address. Now I'm going to configure FA. 01.202 the other way and the other way is you can tell it a prefix and you can tell it a prefix length and then you can tell it the the keyword EUI 64 which basically means I want you to configure your own IPv6 address so if we now look at my IPv6 IPv6 addresses Oh, not int interface, int brief, brief, silly. If we look at our IPv6 interfaces, we'll see that, yes, we also have link local addresses that came up on our um, sub-interfaces, but we do have these statically static unique local addresses we put on there. The first one that I configured as colon colon one is there, and then the second one that I told it to auto-configure use some magic to figure out what its interface portion should be. Basically, it takes a MAC address, sticks FFFE in the middle, and flips a bit. Uh, for some reason, that's what the RSC said to do. So that's what they do. So now I have my IPv6 addresses on my router. So, in theory, with IPv6, you can automatically get your IP addresses from the router. If I check my host, my Windows host doesn't have a, I'm, I'm using Ethernet 3 on my Windows host. My Windows host does not have an, uh, a link local, I mean a unique local address yet. So uh, we're wondering about that. So I'm going to start Wireshark and see if I see any IPv6 traffic. What we want to see would be a router solicitations or router advertisements. I need to tell it which interface to capture on. We're going to go Ethernet 3. And I'm going to put a IPv6 filter on. We put the IPv6 filter on. We're not really seeing anything yet. So we'll wait and see if we see a router solicitation or a router advertisement for a minute or two or maybe like 10 seconds because I don't feel like waiting. So really it's not working yet. 
because uh, Cisco routers do not do IPv6 unicast routing until you tell it to do IPv6 unicast routing with the command IPv6 unicast routing. So once I put that command in there, then hopefully my router will become a router and it will send some IPv6 traffic. So that was a lot of IPv6 traffic uh, that showed up. So hopefully now my host has automatically configured its IPv6 address. So if we look at what we have, we can see that now my host has its IPv6 um, address in the FD002401002 subnets and it auto configured it with those uh, long string of characters. So how did it do that? Well, if we come back here and try to find our router solicitation and router advertisement, we should see as soon as I turned on IPv6 unicast routing, the first thing we saw was a router advertisement from the router, right? It's IPv, ICMPv6 packet. And if we look at this router advertisement, it tells the, the prefix information, um, MTU, uh, source link layer address, it tells where, where it came from, came from Cisco, prefix information. So my host was able to use this information to build its own address. So in this case, uh, the stateless auto configuration worked. So now if we wanted to uh, send, send IPv6 traffic, we could. But before we do that, we're going to go look at the Linux side of things. In, this, uh, in order to facilitate me more easily recording this podcast, I have my Linux VM running on the same host that my Windows VM is working on, but I've installed a second network interface in this machine so my Linux machine is connected to a separate network interface uh, from what we were looking at with a Windows machine. Uh, so that's how I'm be able to do this. When you do this in the lab, you'll need to have your Linux machine on an entirely separate host because none of our other machines have separate uh, network interfaces in it. So on Linux, we type if config to see if we have an IPv6 address. We do have a link local address, but we did not get an auto configured address. So what we want to do then is go check our network settings and see how we're set up for IPv6. We are set to ignore, so we're going to change that to automatic. Hit apply, put in roots password, and now hopefully we'll have an IPv6 address. So now we do have our IPv6 address. Um, that we got from our router advertisement, router solicitation process. So that was that. that. That's the configuration of our LAN. If I could, could bother to remember that ridiculous IP address, I could try to ping it. Ping D00. All right, so there we go. I'm pinging from my Windows host to my Linux host, uh, and that worked uh, fine. Let's get my Windows machine. Something I've noticed about Windows, and I probably should look this up and figure out why, but it gives a IPv6 address and a temporary IPv6 address, and I don't really know why it does both. With Linux, when you ping, you have to do ping 6, which you should remember from the link local part. That's a hall type and all that. Man, can I hate to be a help desk. Hey, a help desk guy, I can't I can't do it. Okay, what's your IPv6 address? I don't know what just happened to my network. Oh, there we go. It's back. So yeah, so that ping's working with IPv6, IPv6 from Linux to Windows. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I have turned my firewall off on my Windows machine already for something else I was doing. Uh, if you can't ping from Windows to Linux, you might need to turn off your IPv6. Sorry, you might need to turn off your firewall. So now that I've configured the inside, I want to configure the outside. So I'm going to go into the FA00 interface and give it an IPv6 address. This will be a static address that I will provide for you. I'm going to go with that because I'm pretty sure that is what I need to make things work the way I expect they should work. Um, 
Do no shutdown. Now my link is up, so now I'm going to, for fun, I'm going to uh, show IPv6 int brief. And I see I have my IP configured. Another command we're gonna look at later, show IPv6 neighbors. It's kind of like ARP, remember? We do neighbor solicitations and neighbor uh, advertisements, so that's kind of like ARP. So that's how we do uh, see our MAC addresses. And I'm gonna try to ping. If you type ping without putting any parameters, it asks you some questions. So I wanna ping and I typed IPv6 and then I'm gonna put in my IPv6 gateway that I wanna ping and hope it works. And it worked. Uh, success rate is 100%. So I'm connected to my IPv6 gateway with my router. So now if I look back at my diagram, it says I have a DNS or web server at FD00100 colon colon 2. So the question is, from my host, can I ping from uh, to that address? So, so can I ping that? And it says destination net unreachable. So hopefully, before I even tried that, you're like, of course you can't ping that, Rich. You didn't configure any routing information on your router. How's your router going to route if it doesn't know how to route? And you're exactly right. So I need a default IPv6 route. So the way we enter that, IPv6 route. Remember in IPv4, we put 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0, and then the next hop. With IPv6, zero colon colon slash zero is the way you write the whole, all the zeros and then we do the same thing we put the next hop so the next hop for my ipv6 route routes is going to be that fd00 colon 240 colon colon one so now in theory cross your fingers this is going to work now in theory if i ping it should work hey look at that so now i can ping my uh dns server that's out on some other subnet same thing over here, I should be able to ping, ping that from over here also, hopefully. That's not right. What is it, 100? Yeah, so now I can access that. So basically that is what we will be doing uh, in the lab. You saw how my addresses got automatically configured from my router advertisements. We're gonna be looking at the router advertisements in the, in the lab. Uh, there are, you can statically configure your IP addresses on your host if you so choose. Both uh, CentOS uh, 6 and newer and Windows 7 and Windows 10 uh, will allow you to use the, the graphical user interface to configure the IPv6 address. So if I go over here and look at this, GUI, I can go down here and I can use it to statically configure an IPv6 address. I'm not requiring that in the lab since, it, since the auto configuration worked. You can also use NetSH commands to, uh, to configure IPv6 addresses. Those are on the lab sheet for you to reference if you want to see what they look like. Uh, you can use ifconfig commands on Linux to configure IPv6 addresses. So that's how to get things configured. Once we all get it configured, then we're going to do a couple other things. We ping to our, our uh, DNS server, but now we want to see if we can browse to it. So if you open a browser and you put the IP address of the server in and try that, it's going to tell you weird things. So maybe we need to put HTTP in front of it. Actually, I'm not going to do that. With IPv6 addresses, you need to put the address in square brackets if you want to use it as an address. So you do that. That should work. Oh, hey, I didn't start the web server. Yeah, I need to go start the web server. So, I wonder if I can SSH to an IPv6 address. Extra learning right here. Ugh.
Yeah, I don't see where it tells me anything about IPv6 in there. It's a dash six. Maybe it didn't like the brackets. Maybe I don't need the brackets. Hey, look at that. I didn't need the brackets. So my web server is not um, running. So I'll start my web server. And I'm also going to change something else. I didn't want you to see my uh, page because it's probably not something I want on a uh, podcast forever. So now if I put my IPv6 address in brackets, uh, I get the Apache test page since I don't have an index page over there anymore. So that's expected. So you might be thinking, hey, Rich, that IPv6 address isn't very unfriendly. What happens when I have one that's uh, a lot longer and more annoying? Well, we can use DNS with IPv6. So if we do an NS lookup, for cnt.lab, I've created a all right, so first we need to go edit our interface. I should have known this. Go edit our interface to specify a DNS server. Right? If I specify a DNS server. Now if I do an NS lookup, I get back, in this case I created both an A record, which is 100, 100, 102, and a quad A record, which is FD00102. So now we could go by, by domain name. If I go by domain name, I can access the page by domain name. So the question I have for you is, if we got back both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses, which ones did it actually use? And I was going to let you think about that and figure it out in the lab, but hopefully you figured out, oh, hey, we didn't even configure IPv4, so it had to use the IPv6 addresses. So, yeah, we only had IPv6 addresses, so it used IPv6. And that's really about all we're doing uh, for that part of the lab.